A question that's come my way is how can I add a bento style to my loop grid? You can see an example of the layout on the screen. And it's quite easy to do if you're just working with Flexbox containers, but when you're doing a loop grid, you've got to think a little bit. I'm going to drop in a bit of code that I've kind of refined with ChatGPT, and there are other bits of advice out there, but this is something that could really work well for you, and you can do it all for free without any other third-party plugin. But let me just clarify the layout and that might help explain the code as well. Now everything is going to be built with Elementor loop grid, but I just want to clarify the logic behind how we're going to devise the code and it will make sense in a moment. I'm going to have a layout. Uh, basically, I've got six posts and there's featured images and titles. And the idea is, is that is we're going to have a bit of a staggered approach, something like this, okay? And the idea is, is that is this block over here will be one column and this will be two column, two column, one column, one column, two column. And you can see the pattern building up so that eventually we will then get to something like that. That will be two and that will be one as well. Apologies for the slightly skewed drawing. I wasn't using a ruler. Um, get over it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the, the idea is, is that is every second and third block in groups of four will be two. So if I was to now split this off into groups of four like that, the first one, or basically every block is always defaulted to one. But when we get to the second block and the third block, and you can see that here, they are always going to be two columns wide. I hope that makes sense. Now, because we're working in groups of four, the logic basically works like this. You will say that 4n is equal to how many items there are in the row. So if every default block is going to be equal to one, that means that n is equal to one. OK, this is quite important, right? If n is equal to one. So the formula is now four times one because n is equal to one. Hopefully you're okay with a bit of algebra, okay? So four n equals four because four times one equals four. If I now say in my formula, and you will see this in a moment, okay? If I now say four n minus one, right? Four n is equal to four. Remember, oh, sorry, I've got it. I shouldn't have written it like that, should I? Four n is equal to four. So 4n minus 1 is 4 minus 1. 4n is equal to 4. 4 minus 1 equals 3. If I now do 4n minus 2, 4n is 4 times 1 equals 4. Minus 2 equals 2. So when I define my logic, I'm going to say 4n minus 1 and 4n minus 2 are always going to be two columns wide, okay? That will always touch the third and second item for every four rows. So look, that one and that one, that one and that one, they will always get touched. But what if you go for a more complicated one? So here now, I've got six items, and I'm going to say the first one, which is that one there, and the fifth one are always going to be one block. But when you get to the second, the third, the fourth, and the sixth, they will always be six. I and mean, then that layout will repeat all the time. So we know, or we've decided that n is always equal to one. And we're now working with six blocks. So we're now going to say six n because that equals six, okay? So if you're going to have four items per block, and remember your four items, I need to clarify this, okay? Your four items could be like this, right? Let me just show you. You just have to think out the box and devise in your head the pattern you're going for. Anyway, scrap that, right? I don't, I could, I'm just going to scratch it out because I don't want you to get confused by that. So if we go with 6n, right, and I now want to ensure that I touch blocks 2, 3, 4, and 6, I would write 6n equals 2 blocks because 6n is number 6. 6 times 1 is 6. That is this one, 6n. The number four, though, is going to be 6n minus 2. So 6n minus 2. This would be 6n minus 3. Because 6 times 1 is 6. Minus 3 will now be post number 3, okay? I, should, I shouldn't keep saying block 3. It's post 3. To touch number 2, you would have to do 6n, which equals 6 minus 4. So we'd be touching 6n, 6n minus 2, 6n minus 3, 6n minus 4. Now, I, I'm sorry if I've overcomplicated it, but I just wanted to get you to understand the logic behind the 4n minus 3, sorry, no, the 4n minus 2 and the 4n minus 1 that we're going to be using. 
Let's now go and build the damn thing. I do overcomplicate things, don't I? Right, let's just go and drop in a loop grid. We'll just go for a column. Well, we've got a Flexbox container. Let's just drop in a loop grid into there. Inside a template, we're just going to keep it really, really simple, okay? Just so I can speed through this because I'm sure I've like wrecked your mind so far with all of those calculations. I'm going to drop in a featured image and we're going to drop in a post title as well. I'm just going to make my images be 150 in height and then just go and set them to be a cover. And we'll just go with top center, mainly because a lot of the images are varied in height in terms of horizontal and vertical which you don't need to worry about. Anyway, let's just hit save and back. And what you now get is post one to six in descending order looking like that. So if we now go back to the logic or the look I wanna go for, this will be one column wide and then this will be, a well, post five will now be two columns wide. So I'm gonna go and click on my loop grid, go to my advanced tab, go down to custom CSS and I'm just gonna drop this in and watch those posts. Accepting the fact that the images are appalling and rubbish, okay, but don't worry, we will tinker with that. Post six is one, post five and four are now two columns wide. Post three is one, post two is one, and post one is two. Remember, we're working in blocks of four and you can see that here because it says four N. So the four N, well, basically everything from default is one column. You can see that here. Grid column one, every loop item is one. But then I say four N, so four times one is four, minus two, that would be two. That is the second post for every grid, um, <laughs> every block of four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, and then the next two posts would have been three and four. So number two, number two, that is the 4n minus two, is always going to be two columns. 4n minus one, well, four times one is four, minus one is three. So every third one, that would be here. And if there was another post here, that would also be the third one in the next chain of four, or block of four, or sequence of four. It would now be spanning two columns. That's how simple and easy it is. And if I was to go and do something like this, just go and set it to be 4n, post 2 is affected, post 3 isn't, but post 4 is. Why is post 4 affected? Well, 4n is 4 times 1, which is 4. So that's the logic uh, behind the calculation in case you ever want to get your head around that. That was really simple and easy too, but let's take it a stage further. This parent container at the moment contains the loop grid. I'm going to go to my parent container. And I'm now going to drop in two new child containers. Let's just duplicate that. Let's just zero out the margin and padding. And I'm going to pick up my loop grid and pop it into child number two. So we got child number one, which is empty, and child number two, which obviously has the loop grid. And we've modified it with that little bit of CSS. How tiny was that? Let's go to the parent container and set this to be a row like that. So now everything is side by side. Yeah, I know it's looking pretty squashed up. Don't worry yet. Into child container number one, I'm going to drop in a brand new loop grid and we'll pop it in there. I'm now going to create a brand new template. It actually isn't going to be that different from what we already did. So I'm just going to go in, drop in a container, drop in a featured image, drop in the post title. I'm going to make the height of it be 640. You would have probably have worked this out accurately because I want it to be as high as these three over here. Don't worry, this is all going to be cleaned up in a moment. Go to my featured image. I'm going to make that be pretty tall as well. I'm going to set it to be a cover. Again, seriously, don't worry about how it looks. Just set your image to be 100% in width as well. Now I'm going to hit save and back. So we have two different loop grids. We've got one over there that's got the CSS which is this one. And then we got this other one, which now has a taller image. Let's click on this loop grid and set it to only show me one column and one item. So we get this kind of look, all right? And again, apologies for how rubbish that image looks. I've added another post with a sharper image. The parent container has a gap of 15 between child container number one and child container number two that contains all these posts. The posts inside of here, they've been set to have a 15 gap for their column and row, so everything is nice and equal. Child container number one, I'm going to make sure it's set to be full width, and I'm going to reduce it to be 40 in width, and I'm going to go to child container two, and I'm going to set that to be 60, so when we now view it, that is the layout for our post, and we got a nice big post for the latest one, so if you wanted to show off further content, you could do, you know, because remember, this is a completely different loop grid. So you could have the excerpts in here, but in everything afterwards, and remember the formula we've got in there, 
these might be smaller. So maybe now they don't have the excerpt or maybe they show more custom fields or whatever you want. This was a little bit of an elongated convoluted video. I accept that, but I really wanted to make sure from the get go, the beginning, you had a bit more of a better understanding. Because when I go and stick in the 4N minus two, you might look at that and go, how come that's touching the second one? And why is 4N minus one touching the third one? Isn't 4N minus one like the second one or anything like that? So I hope that clarifies it. Go and tinker with the code. Um, of course, though, whenever you do stick in any code like this, bear in mind that this will affect every screen size. So it's not a bad idea to stick something in like this at media only screen and minimum width is 768. And uh, you will have a curly bracket there and then you need to add one at the end. That means that this particular style or what we're doing with the loop grid with where it does the staggered approach only kicks in when the minimum size is 768. So everything for desktop and above. But when you get below 768, so we're hitting, you know, loads of tablets now, uh, some very small laptops and mobile smartphone screens, it won't apply that. And when you get to the mobile, everything will be stacked. I haven't modified the sizes or the spacing because we do have two child containers in there but you would modify it accordingly to make it work for you. But then when you go back to the desktop, you get your bento style layout for your loop grid. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'm sorry if I bored you to there for the beginning was just overcomplicated. I apologize for that, but I hope everything else we did made sense. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.